Well, we're back here in the shop again tonight. Uh, today's the 21st of uh, January, 2015. It's about 6.30. I'm in here working, and I got uh, the 560 all put back together good, and uh, now I'm working on painting my wagon. <clears throat> wagon. I uh, got it all off. I actually got it sitting on blocks right now I got the hubs the wheels all off the tires are underneath the uh, tarp over there because I was painting and I didn't want to get my yellows and my greens all t all inter intertwined because it doesn't it's so good to get green paint and the yellow stuff and the yellow paint and the green stuff so but uh, I decided to make a quick video again here tonight you know what I've been working on I got the wagon uh, wagon sitting here it uh, looks good it's the second coat already actually um i got this is this like i say this is the second coat i uh got it in here oh monday let's see monday monday i didn't have school on monday so i got it in here monday and sanded it, it took me about uh, 15 to uh let's see 20 minutes 20 minutes to a half hour to sand Oh, excuse me to take all the paint off what was left on the wood and stuff I took the wagon and I took the front the front and rear um panels off I took the side panels out I rethreaded these the bolts that go through there to, to make it uh, to hold the hold the pieces together I took it all apart I uh, left it all but where the where the frame is here down attached and sanded that separately and I did the top top section separately and and whatnot so that way i had a, a easier task at or easier way uh tackling it because um it's easier to hit it more than more than uh, hit it in a couple of shots instead of all at once because then you can kind of work and then relax and then work and then relax but um anyways so yeah i was working on it i uh got the second coat on it now i gotta put one more i want to put one more coat on it yet i've been using actually uh a uh oh, here it is my uh, paint a paint spray gun that i have had it's just a dinky little job smart paint spray gun it's actually not nothing too too impressive um but it works real good i'm painting this uh using the uh, uh using some uh, oil base all this is all this is all oil based paint and we're using on here um, it took me a little while to get this thing set up because I haven't used it in such a while. I hook it up to the air compressor. I have a have a, uh, a special end on it. I actually should change that. Put change this end off and put it on to a different end. But anyways, I uh, got that under here. I'm using some. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's the yellow. I don't want the yellow. I want the green. I am using for paint some van. I think it's called Van Sickle. It's yeah, Van Van Sickle Super Premium Tracker Enamel. That's what I use for all of my equipment. Uh, yeah, this is just safety green four uh, four fifty one seventy one. Um, I can spray paint yellow spray paint there. Um, that's what I'm gonna use, and that's what actually all my green paint. This here actually is the same shade of green, uh, and the yellow is the same shade of yellow as the as the tire as the hubs and everything. Um, I use the same brand. I get it at a local um, tractor shop. Oh, not a really tractor shop. It's more of a like a like a local TSC, but it's a, it's a it's a local um, business that that uh, is in in South Dakota, South Dakota, um, Minnesota. I believe there's maybe one or two along the eastern or the western edge of Minnesota, and then there's one or, one in Iowa. Um, I don't even, maybe there isn't one in Minnesota. Anyways, uh, it's called a, it's Campbell's Supply Store is what it is, and they they sell all this the paint and stuff and all my all the tools and equipment we get here. I usually I we have a TSC in Mitchell, but um, I don't care to patronize them. They're not they don't have the best best of equipment. We haven't had the best of luck with their equipment, and uh, Campbell's has a better better price, and we can uh, we know the people at Campbell's better as well. So. But anyways, so under here I got the uh, you got the hubs there. Actually, I didn't do anything with the hubs. I because they were already 
um, the wheels were already pretty good. We pulled it home. When I bought the wagon, we pulled it home about, oh, 50 miles away. Pulled it home doing, I'd say, 40, 40 miles an hour. And yes, I did say 40 miles an hour. This wagon, the running gear handled 40 miles an hour just fine. It's one of them strong John Deere running gears. Um, it's actually one of the best running gears. I have another wagon that has the exact identical running gear, um, but a little bit bigger box. Uh, as you can see kind of right here, it's, it says, it, it, you can, it says call, uh, John Deere. John Deere right there. I got it taped off. I got to um, find a way to paint it, paint it on. Um, but uh, the running gear, yeah, the running gear is the same as it was the one I got on my main picking wagon, which is in prior videos you've seen, uh, like my video of my corn harvest of 2013. Um, that wagon is actually the is the is the little bit bigger version of this one. It's about maybe two foot longer. Oh, and I've got higher sideboards, actually extra set of sideboards to make that one higher. Um, but anyways. Uh, yeah, I can pull. You can pull that wagon down the road at, at good speeds because it uh, it handles it actually really well. And then under here, I got my got my tires. I got my tires all painted up. I got them just drying under there right now. Uh, I got to touch them up in a little bit later here. Um, they're actually not even all the same tire. They're what I what was on it when I bought it. Um, they're kind of goofy, but I pulled this wagon home from up by my uh, where I was shelling corn this year, full of corn. Um, and didn't have any problem, any tire issue or anything. So, but, uh, uh, back, well, back to them hubs. Um, we pulled it home doing about 40 miles an hour the whole way and, uh, got home and felt the, felt the, um, well, we went about half ways and I felt the hubs just to make sure they weren't hot, uh, because that's a sign of, sign of lack of grease and a sign that the, the bearings are going to go out. So, we, um, Pulled it home the rest of the way and they stayed on and they worked good and I haven't had any issues with them so here they are now and they're going to stay the way they are. And I got the tires under there with the rims and I got the hubs on there I got the wagon sitting here and it kind of looks funny you come in the shop here and uh, there's a wagon sitting here on blocks on uh, on four sets of blocks. But uh, I have to show you real quick here what I did to my uh, 560. I've been working on it oh, I went from the last video actually here go in the shed here if I can hit the right switch there we go there's cats um, I built a rock box ah, there's one of my cats that's creepy I built a rock box for the front of the five um, the only problem I have is you can shake the bugger and it bounces I gotta find a way to reinforce it make it make it stronger um, yeah, I'm gonna, I think what I'm going to do is weld a strap across the top. I had to cut, I had to cut that open so I could uh, get my bolts in there. I run a strap across the top here and repaint it. I had it all painted up really nice. It looked really good. Um, I just got to do a little minor tear down and rebuild work to it. Uh, this this rock box is actually identical to uh, that rock box sitting there. That's the one I used to. Uh, to build the uh, to build the design out of the the layout design of um, only differences in the in the two rock boxes is the the way they're mounted but otherwise the bit the box itself is uh, I believe these th this side here is 24 by no yeah 24 oh, 24 by 20 and it's 18 inches deep and that box that lid the lid here or the bottom and then I built my own hand mechanism my own lever mechanism on this one it's the same exact mechanism as the rock box over there but uh, yeah it's the same hinge system um, that one you were just looking at it upside down it, it's laid laid with this end um, the, with this face towards the ground but um, I gotta quit yawning oh I gotta come up with a weight up because it doesn't move when I bump into it sideways it doesn't move but you uh, bounce on it like it were to be going down the field and you're hitting, hitting ruts and stuff and it's bouncing 
there it's gonna have I'm gonna have a problem because I'm uh, afraid it's gonna I'm gonna bust something off anyways so um, other than that uh, fives all back together now all good to go I uh, went back in here I got my new got my new uh, oh, you probably can't see it it's dark got my new t uh, temp gauge or temp yeah temp gauge in there um, oop, got the battery and everything all redone and I uh, now got the, there's the new gas, or the new temperature gauge. And there's my new gas gauge. The fun thing about the gas gauge, is flip my light on to one, not just my dash. Flip it on two, there's a light in the back of this gauge, which works really nice. I really like that, because uh, at night I can see the gauge, and you flip the key on, and it'll, it'll react, because it's full. Um... I had to put a whole new sensor and a whole new gauge in there because the company that made the old sensor uh, was no longer no longer made made sensors so I had to put a whole different sensor in there but otherwise it uh, works pretty good I uh, actually wired the uh, gas gauge in with the lights the the grill light yeah the lights which basically there's a, uh, a peg underneath here and the inside that uh, that uh, when you flip the light switch on, it uh, gives power to the, uh, yeah, it gives power to the, uh, to the uh, lights. And actually, there's, it's a dimming, so when I flip the switch on the first notch, this actually is on. It's, it is on, you can't really see it, but then, but yeah, you can, you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. It's just a dim, because the headlights are dimmed. And then you flip the headlights to bright, so. But no, for that, that's what's been going on. I got the old five uh, vamped and running, and I uh, even I went and took the time to get this little little bugger to work again. It didn't work for me. It was stuck like a stuck. It was really stuck. So I filled it with oil and some PB blaster and some other stuff, and I even got this little the little set screw here to work, so I can uh, adjust. Adjust it as I need it. So I'm pretty. I was pretty impressed with that. Pretty happy that I got all that fixed, working good. But yeah, I got to build a bracket. Got to build a uh, something on here to keep it from bouncing. I don't know. I may. I don't know. I have to. I have to decide what I want to do because even I could build something that goes from from here that goes and sits in that bolt hole. So. But for now, that's that, because actually, you know, the, well, no, that wouldn't work, because the axle, the axle moves. Well, whatever, I'll figure it out. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what's going on with that. I got, like I said, I got the rock box done. I uh, got the five done, and now I'm going to go back, because it is cold in here. And, uh, yeah, there's the buzz saw for the H, where we, uh, when we cut wood for the furnace in the shop. My grandpa's been back, so... The wood's been flying off the shelf like it's going out of style. He has to keep it almost 90 degrees in here because he can't feel his feet. So, but hey, that's what happens when you're 76 years old. So, so on that note, there you have it. There's my wagon. That's what I've been working on lately.